Please, congratulations. Uh, I got to assume the, the biggest win of your career to date. Uh, very impressive performance. How do you feel about uh, the way things went tonight? Oh, absolutely amazing. Uh, definitely the biggest win of my career. Leading up to this, uh, I knew there was, this was the biggest uh, fight of my career. It's Robert Whittaker. The man hasn't lost uh, to anybody else in the champion in almost a decade. But I said it, this is not going to see the third round. Uh, TK in a second happened that way because, you know, I just know my fighting style. And I guess this answers all the nose questions. <laughs> You, you, you were very respectful of him coming into this fight. You, know, you knew how great he was. He did have some success early on, uh, and then you see his momentum you know, towards the end of round one. I guess, how did things play out? Was anything surprising to you in there? No, not at all, uh, especially in the beginning of the fight. I, I, I said it. I, I can't go and fight Robert Whittaker like I fought a Brad Tavares. Um, he is too good and too calculated. I needed to um, figure out his timing and... I think the the game plan, my coach Monet Fisa, he is obviously a guru at this. He is the the man who put this all together, coming out and fighting southpaw against a guy like like Whitaker. You know, I always do switch stance, but to go and, and learn a complete new style for this guy, and it just worked perfectly. But you know, in that first, I would say first half of the first round, I was almost checking to see, okay, what. How fast is he? How hard does he hit? And he hits hard and he hits fast. But it was just getting that timing, seeing, okay. But it was still going forward and putting pressure on. That was the plan and that's what I executed. Much easier said than done when you're fighting and standing in front of Robert Whittaker throwing these big shots. But at the end of the day, I progressed and, and I, I made that pressure forward, made the pressure forward. And I could see in his eyes when he realized this guy's not slowing down and this guy's not going away. So amazing victory, and, and they leave no doubt that you're getting the title shot next, bringing Israel Adesanya into the cage. I guess, what did you make of that, of, of, of him being brought in and you guys having that face off? What did you make of the whole situation? Yeah, the only thing I made of that was uh, it's usually the, whoa, it's usually the, um, the, the contender that goes into the cage, right? So, I mean, even he sees me as the champion already, so he better knows I'm the champion. And now that he's seen me in that cage, he knows what a force I am in there. He could feel the energy, and I could feel how insignificant he is to me when we get into that cage. Last thing for me, uh, Dana was here earlier. He said he's not going to bother you about when you can fight, give you a little time, but everybody knows we're looking for a main event in Sydney. Is nine weeks even a possibility, or is that unrealistic to ask you to be ready for a title fight in that kind of time? What I say is Dana White obviously knows fighters, and he, he has the respect to uh, know that tonight's all about celebrating myself and obviously celebrating uh, the legend of Robert Whittaker. Drickus right here. Um, it seemed like coming into this fight, a lot of people are counting you out, not giving you your respect. And it seemed like Robert Whitaker was maybe the person who was giving you the most respect in terms of what you're capable of. Do you think now the people appreciate what you're able to do in there and give you your recognition? <laughs> I mean, yeah, Robert Whitaker, like I said, smart guy and uh, a true warrior, a true martial artist. He knows that martial arts you are as good as your opponent makes you look. And uh, him being the warrior that he is, he came out here tonight prepared like always and he was in great shape. And, but he could see what a lot of people failed to see. And that is a style that people are used to. People are used to certain styles. They don't know our style. They don't know how we put this whole thing together. And he saw that. And that's why he said, I'm the most dangerous opponent he's ever faced. That's why he said, one mistake he made is he thought, I don't have anything to lose. And I didn't fight like somebody who doesn't have anything to lose. I fought like somebody who has everything to lose. And every time I step in there, I have my life to lose. And I will protect that with everything. I have my family name, the Duplessis name to protect when I step in there. I have the South African flag to protect when I step in there. I have Team CIT behind me that I represent when I step in there. I have absolutely everything to lose when I step in there, and I hope I, everybody saw that tonight. And whether you fight Izzy in Sydney or at a later date, it seems like, you know, given the things that have been said in the past, what was said in the cage, this could be a very kind of divisive and controversial build up a little bit. Um, how are you preparing yourself for that? Are you wanting to step away from it? Like, how, what do you think the build is gonna be like? I mean, you saw it tonight, I'm prepared. I'm prepared for everything. Everything he says, anything he, He's behaving like a clown in there. You know, that's not how a champion behaves. That's not how a man behaves. He's behaving like a child. 
conduct yourself like a champion. There's people looking up to you and you're behaving like that. Nah, you know, if that sells tickets, good for him. I'll sell tickets my way. I'm a gentleman, I'm a man, and I'll behave like a man. When you do get in the octagon with him, how do you think this fight goes? How do you beat him? What? I'll knock him out just like I did tonight. You know, if not, we saw his fight with Alex Pereira. If I get him to the floor, it is not even a fight. It's not even a fight. If I just get my hands on him, it's not even a fight. I will manhandle him. I've done it before and I'll do it again. And, uh, you know, as far as the striking goes, look, at, let's take that out of, the, out of the question. You are as good as your last performance. What did his performance, his last performance look like against Whitaker? Yeah, he beat him. It was a close fight. What did my last performance against Whitaker look like? So, right now, that's how I plan on beating him. The same way I beat Whitaker tonight, by implementing the game plan and sticking to my style and doing what we do best. Listening to my coaches, listening to the great Monet Fisher, the great teammates I have at CIT, the guy, a small gym in South Africa, coming up with game plans with this awkward style, this style that looks completely wrong to so many people. I'm the number one contender in the world right now, so it's time to put some respect on that. Drake, it's over here. Um, Congrats on the win, very impressive performance. Thanks, you, you, you obviously had the surgery as well, sort of leading into this. How much different did you feel in there? Because you looked really uh, awesome just from the get-go. Oh, thank you, I, I felt incredible. You know, I didn't want to uh, speak on the, on the fact too much before the fight, because, you know, it was, that's the kind of pressure that is a little bit out of somebody's control, I feel, to handle, because I could look at my fights previously, and I know, I'm like, yeah, my opponents are tired too, look. They are tired too, but I look at the fights and I'm like, for the amount of work, and I know for the amount of work that I'm putting in, I'm not supposed to be this tired. I'm not supposed to be this tired, and this made such a difference. I felt incredible out there tonight. I didn't feel a little bit tired. I felt great, and the pace wasn't low. It was a great pace, and I could see my opponent slowing down when I was, when I was just starting to get going. I could see in his eyes, in his body language, everything that I needed to, and I just felt, I felt invincible in there, and it, it felt great. It made all the difference in the world. And Cameron Simon winning earlier on the card, and it was the case on the last event as well. Did, how much does that help you going into the fight? Just like, you know, it's like a team mentality sort of going on this card with him winning impressively. How much did that give you like a bit, little bit of a boost going into that fight? Absolutely, and of course, the, the mighty Springboks beating the, the Aussies, the Wallabies in the rugby, it was 47-12. What an obl obliteration, and uh, that, was, that, was the first, uh, that was the first inspiration I got. That was the first little boost I got. You know, my countrymen can do it, I can do it. And then, obviously, Cameron coming in and, and putting up a massive performance because this guy is the future champion. It doesn't take a genius to see that. And, uh, you know, I'm so proud of him, and, and we are incredibly proud to represent the flag, the South African flag. And, and come over here and put up these performances once again as a duo and as a team. And it made the absolute world. And uh, last one for me, just kind of looking ahead a little bit here. If they do end up making you and Izzy, do you think Sean Strickland would be a rightful backup in that situation if something happened? Yeah, maybe. Uh, congratulations on the victory. Uh, to touch on it once again, obviously Robert Whitaker is a guy who's been at a very high level for a long time. What are some of the openings that you saw in the cage that you could explain for us when we watch that tape back of this performance? Like I said before, there's not a lot of openings to see, real quick, you know, with, with Rob. But one thing was, I was big against Rob tonight. I could feel it when we were in the grappling exchange, in the wrestling exchange, I was strong. I could feel I was a lot stronger than him physically. But he's fast and his footwork is so good. Like, he makes you miss all the time. And until I figured that out, he just has a very, like his movements are the same constantly. And I brought in a lot of uh, karate guys for this camp, we did. And uh, it worked so well, because I figured out that movement. I figured out the, but he does it so well. He, what, he, what he does really good is he, he's in the pocket, and as soon as you go for him, he's out of the pocket. He just moves backwards, but laterally so. And he doesn't move side to side. He just moves backwards and forwards. And he does it really quick. So, you know, it took me, that's the first half of the fight, the first half of the first round, it took me to, to figure that out. But then I saw, cool. His hands are low, but he's not blocking a body kick, and I started landing. And uh, 
I realized he has a, his left hook was really hard, but it wasn't the, the signature one-two head kick that he does so well. I was super prepared for that. He threw two of them, and it wasn't as strong as I thought, to be honest. It wasn't, I don't know if it didn't land flush, but you know, I, I blocked both and I could feel, I felt a lot more comfortable moving to the open side. But at the end of the day, it was about being patient and being composed, which I felt I did a lot better tonight than ever before. When you talk about your career, you've had in the UFC, you've been part of some really big events and slowly, you know, keep moving up the ranks, moving up the card and everything. And now with the, this biggest victory in your career, how do you even put into words that whole journey? Because you've been on big events, but it feels like you really took center stage tonight. Well, thank you. Uh, you know, when you're finding uh, a guy, a future Hall of Famer and a guy, if you're in the pound for pound rankings and not even having a belt, that has to say something. And, and like Whitaker tonight was the fan favorite and he was the betting favorite by far, and rightfully so. I stick by that. And I said it before this fight this is where I take that torch. This is where I become the favorite. This is where I become the guy who doesn't lose. And it was a massive honor to share the, the cage with him tonight and uh, to do myself, my family, my team, and my people proud and go out here on, and the UFC. They, they you know, Dana, Hunter, um, Mick, uh, you know, all these guys that are, are giving us these opportunities, it's amazing. It's, you know, it, with, they made this fight and a lot of people were criticizing them for making this fight. You know, they just said, this is a dumb fight to make, make the easy fight. And this is the fight we wanted to have. This is the fight we, when they, and they asked us to, if we would take this fight. I was excited because I knew this is what's going to happen tonight. I knew we were going to steal the show, and we did. Because you have two incredible warriors going out there and leaving everything on the line in there, and it was amazing. Cameron finally got a victory, no fouls. Can we finally get him to talk golf? <laughs> Yeah, we'll talk about that. We'll see. <laughs> Let's go have some beers first. Drakus, um, is it safe to say fixed nose Drakus is a mythical fighter now? Um, hated that question leading up to the fight. Absolutely love it now, and yes. <laughs> uh, Drakus back here. So it's been nearly five years since you've, la you've lost a fight. Confidence-wise, where are you at, and how does that feel knowing that it's been that long since you've su suffered a defeat? You know, it's it's interesting. I don't think about losing, and you know, I haven't looked at that. This now that you've mentioned it, it's the first time. You know, looking back at my losses, they've all been extremely good to me. Every loss that, uh, well, the two losses that I've had, uh, one of them, I was extremely young. And uh, I didn't deserve to win that fight. And the last loss I had at, 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 at welterweight 170, wasn't for that loss I would have been in the UFC right now as a 170 fighter where I don't belong. And uh, that was one of the best things that ever happened to me. So, you know, I feel as a fighter you have to, you have to, some stage in your career, feel loss, feel what it feels like to lose, to really appreciate that win. And now I felt it. No need to feel any more losses now. Thank you, everybody.